thank you for the nice presentation. Um, I'm very, very glad to be here with you. Today I'm going to talk about the most recent research we have been doing in biohydrogen production and uh, duct fermentation in our lab. So um, the general uh, uh, in the dark fermentation process, you you're going to have a carbohydrate-rich wastewater. You are going to put it into a bioreactor in the in typically. Uh, then you add a microbial community. At this uh, in this process, you are going to produce hydrogen, which is a clean alternative for fossil fuels, and you are going to also to produce some volatile fatty acids, a mixture of these volatile fatty acids. This is typically the process that we, we expect in, the, in that fermentation. However, some of these uh, carbohydrates, carbohydrates, the majority of them, are easily degradable. So uh, this is a problem because many kinds of bacteria can use these carbohydrates and produce something different, totally different than what we are uh, expecting. One of these uh, microbial groups that is especially important in dark fermentation is uh, lactic acid bacteria. This bacteria uses the carbohydrates to produce lactate. This lactate, the problem is that is it accumulates in the process. It can uh, decrease the hydrogen production, decrease the hydrogen yield, and compromise the stability of the process. So that's why this is it's a problem with these microorganisms. Recently, an alternative to overcome this issue has been uh, to use lactate-based hydrogen production because hydrogen can also be uh, produced from, uh, from lactic acid uh, using, uh, using lac uh, acetate and producing CO2 and also butyric acid. So the idea is to, first, to perform a first fermentation of the carbohydrate-rich wastewater in order to transform all the carbohydrates to lactic acid, then you can obtain uh, only lactic acid, then a in a second step, at that fermentation, you obtain the hydrogen. In this table, you can see that most of the, that, that uh, many different ferm uh, fermented wastewaters can produce a high contents of lactic acid. So the, the problem here would be that what happened with the residual carbohydrates? Because if you, if, especially when you, you don't have control of this fermentation step, when you produce with lactic acid, you're going to have residual carbohydrates, which can go from zero to 20% uh, in some reports. So the question we asked, so, or the objective of this research was to analyze the effect of carbohydrate and lactate content during the hydrogen production using model substrates and fermented agroindustrial wastewater. The real effluents from cheese whey this is cheese whey and winery binases. So we performed this study. Uh, we, to, to this study, we performed three different analyses. A kinetic analysis, a microbiological analysis, and a functional analysis. I'm gonna talk about, uh, about them. So in the methodology, we have two different experiments. The first experiment was performed by changing the ratio of lactic, uh, of, of carbohydrate to lactic acid. You can see we go here from total uh, content of carbohydrates to total content of lactic acid. We had to add some acetic acid in, in order to allow the system to perform the dark fermentation process. In a second uh, experiment, we, use, we, we choose one of these conditions, a representative condition of the synthetic substrates, and we also perform the experiments of dark fermentation with fermented winery whey, bean binances and fermented, fermented cheese whey. So these uh, fermentations were performed in an automatic system. We use as inoculum native microorganisms from the one eye binases. In the kinetic analysis, we obtain the parameters of a Gompers model, a modified Gompers model. We use a modified Gompers model because we have, because of these uh, two different uh, substrates, we're gonna have a, a diaosic uh, behavior in the process. So we expect to have two different velocities or rates related to the carbohydrate and to the lactate consumption. Uh, for the microbiological analysis, we perform 16S rRNA uh, sequencing coupled to, to some bioinformatic tools, and also we construct some uh, uh, bacteria network analysis. You will see that in the, in the next slides. For the functional analysis, we use tax for fun, which is a, 
a tool that allows us to predict the microbial functions that is, and is based in the Silva database. Well, in the kinetic analysis, we obtained that. These are the different uh, parameters of the Gompers model. Here we have the lag time. The, the one thing you can observe is that uh, depending on the content of uh, carbohydrates, uh, when you add the carbohydrates to the medium, you're going to have a decrease in the lag time observed. So here you have the uh, total uh, lactate, here total carbohydrate. So this, uh, when you have carbohydrates in the media, the lag time is going to be lower. So lower than, than complete lactate. So a second observation here is that when we compare the maximum rate of carbohydrate consumption to the maximum rate of lactate consumption, we observe that the maximum rate of lactate consumption was higher than the one of carbohydrate consumption. This was around uh, 100, and the other one was around 40 milliliters per liter of reactor per hour. A third observation, when we look at the uh, real effluents, we observe that the fermentation with binary binases, we obtain a, a lower high hydrogen potential compared for, with, for example, cheese whey and with the other synthetic uh, experiments, or the experiments with a synthetic substrate. In the microbiological analysis here, we are uh, observing the inoculum, some of the conditions of the synthetic substrates. Here we have the, the chosen one uh, synthetic condition and the, the real influence in different times. So what we observed in the microbiological analysis was first that the lactic acid bacteria dominated when carbohydrates was a major component. We have these two conditions, carbohydrates, the major component was dominated by lactic acid bacteria. When we have a lactate as the major component, the clostridium was the genera that dominated the, uh, the microbiology, uh, microbiological community. We have this in these conditions. Then in the special case of one binases, when we observe a lower hydrogen potential, we observe, also observe that lactic acid bacteria were also dominant when using one binases, which may explain uh, also, well, well, part of the, of the lower a hydrogen foundation that we obtain. The other kind of results that we obtained was uh, we construct a bacterial network analysis that was performed for, for, from one of my colleagues. We perform uh, this uh, anilia, we construct this, this network analysis for first for the model substrate and the cheese way in one side and for the winery binases in the other side. In the first one, we observe or we, we conclude that we have high number of positive, positive interactions between lactic acid bacteria and clostridium especially. So this enhances the hydrogen production. In the other one, when we have a low hydrogen potential, we observe that the winery binases have uh, many negative interactions with the microbial communities, especially with acetobacter and lactic acid bacteria. We think uh, this, this could be a mensalism which means that uh, acetobacter may be producing something affecting uh, uh, lactic acid bacteria, but, but this is still a, an hypothesis that we have to, to prove, what was the, the result of these uh, 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 networks. Then we perform a functional profile analysis. Imagine when you have the taxonomic profile, you have the, the taxonomical fingerprint of the process. This is kind of a functional fingerprint of the process. So here we compare the model and the cheese whey substrates compared to the winery binases at the initial and final conditions and then initial and final conditions. One interesting thing that we observed was a change in the metabolic uh, fingerprint or metabolic profile uh, in the process when we observed the higher uh, hydrogen potentials. Uh, when we have a winery binases, a lower hydrogen potential, we didn't observe this change in the metabolic uh, fingerprint, the metabolic profile. So, here we have the, this is significant differences in some of the enzymes. These are the, all the enzymes that are uh, directly related to the hydrogen production. So we, with this information, we managed to uh, make some, uh, 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 we try to draw the metabolism that is related to the initial and the final condition. So in the initial condition, mostly we are going to have a fermentative metabolism with, because of the carbohydrate consumption. We are producing lactate, we are producing hydrogen, ethanol, acetate, 
uh, butyrate, etc. So this is a very broad uh, metabolism. But when we have uh, lactate consumption, we're going to have a very uh, a narrow uh, metabolism. It's more, more, more specific. We use lactate. And because of the, the higher uh, abundance of this enzyme, we think, uh, we speculate that the most important process or most important pathway to produce hydrogen with lactate it may be the ferrodoxine oxidation. And also, another interesting uh, conclusion here is that we confirm that this, these enzymes that were previously uh, observed or were previously reported to be included in this uh, pathway, we observe dif important differences when we use lactate as substrate uh, related to, the, to this mechanism. So we're kind of confirming that this pathway uses this, uh, this enzyme. So it was, was a very nice uh, result. As take home messages, I want you to, to take the, these ones. Hydrogen pro production for fermented wastewater is driven by, by the community dynamics, interactions, and metabolic potentials. We observe that the carbohydrate content helped accelerate the expression of the lactic acid consumption pathway, as you see in the, in the, the effect on the lactime. The, and also that microbial interactions with communities in the fermented wastewater had a more significant effect on hydrogen production than substrate con the, the substrate composition, as we observed in when we compared Weiner binases and cheese wheat. In the outlook of this research, we want also to study the effect of other compounds in lactate-based hydrogen production, for example, some other volatile fatty acids. And we also want to test the hypothesis yielded by the network analysis that we obtained in, in the previous slide. So I want to thank the, our university for, the financial, for the, the financial support of this project. I want to thank my other colleagues, Julian and Idania, who are co-authors of this work. Here you have our social networks, my email, and I want to thank the community of our lab. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.